it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tim Jeanette. Hey everyone, this is Tim Jeanette the Metal Meeple, and in this video we're taking a look at a small game called Welcome to the Dungeon. It came out in 2015 by Yellow. Uh, it originally was a game in Jap Japanese in 2013 called Dungeons of Mandom. Yellow has spiced it up a little bit and released it. Anyway, it's designed by Masato Usugi. And uh, it's for two to four players, takes about 30 minutes with full amount of players. And it basically is a game where you're playing chicken. You have one adventurer that you share in the middle of the table and a bunch of a monster deck. And on your turn, you flip over a card and you decide if you want to put it in the deck in the dungeon that you're building. Or if you want to remove it from the game along with one of the pieces of equipment that the adventurer has. Eventually, you're going to be like, That's, there's no way he can kill what's in that dungeon with the stuff he has left, so I'm out. Once all players are out, or except for one unlucky soul, or maybe lucky soul, he will go through that dungeon with the adventurer and all the stuff he has left to try to kill it all. First person to win twice, or be the last person alive as the winner. So, anyway, let's, uh, let's take a look at it. I'll show you how it plays, and we'll come back and I'll tell you what I think. So here we have the setup for Welcome to the Dungeon. You have an adventurer, uh, you choose one of the four, you put out the six pieces of equipment they have, and you have the monster deck. And basically, on each player's turn, they have one of two options. They either draw the top card of this deck and do something with it, or they're going to pass and they'll be out for that round. And what you're doing is you're adding monsters into the dungeon, or taking monsters out of the game and removing a piece of equipment to kind of play this game of chicken. And the last player who's in has to run the dungeon with what's left and fight off all the monsters before taking damage equal to their hit points. Um, it, so let me show you some of the monsters. The, the deck of monsters is essentially just numbers. You've got one through nine. Uh, some of them have multiples. And at the top right, these are kind of signifiers or some equipment like the torch and the, uh, the grail, which will kill certain enemies. So you don't even have to fight them, but it basically... It, depending on the character that you play with or adventurer. Everybody's playing with the same, it's just whoever stays in longer to take him into the dungeon. So let's, uh, let's shuffle this a bit and see what happens. Now, like I said, one person's going to start, they're going to draw the top card, and they got to decide if they want to put this into the dungeon or remove it from the game, but in order to do, do, do that, you have to take one of the pieces of equipment with it. In this case, the torch shows up right here, and the torch can kill this guy. So let's just say that player decides to put it in the dungeon. The next player draws a card. He puts it in the dungeon. And you, as you can see, the dungeon's being built. We've got the demon here. He's number seven. The warrior has no effective way to get rid of it except for one. But let's just say that player takes this out of the game and removes the grail. At that point, everybody's like, well, I've been putting some grail guys in there. So now it becomes a little bit more difficult. So as the game goes on, you're going to start building this dungeon. We'll just put a few of them in there, and we'll remove one more piece of equipment. Eventually, all the players are going to pass except for one, in which that player is going to take this dungeon and run through it. So let me show you the abilities on, this, uh, on these tokens first when we put them back. This is the basic character. Uh, this is a game that was uh, Japanese at first, and I think this was the only character since then uh, on this version. They've added three more. So, the warrior has three hit points naturally. He also has a five hit point and a three hit point piece of equipment. He has this sword in which you can defeat one monster that you choose uh, before entering the dungeon. So before we flip this first card over, we get to decide which number basically we're gonna kill. There's like say for instance you say five, um, either of the fives that you flip over out of this dungeon deck, it's gonna immediately kill and you don't have to take damage. He's got the dragon slaying uh, spear here that defeat the dragon, which is the nine. We've got the grail that defeats monsters with even numbered strength. So all the even cards in the deck have this grail at the top right. And similarly, we have the torch, which defeats all monsters with strength three or less, which has the uh, icon at the top right. So I don't remember what we moved. Oh, we removed the grail, and let's just say this three hit point. And we're running through this deck. So we flip over the top card, and we've got a nine. Well, actually, before we do that, we've got that sword. We're going to say fives. We're going to kill the fives. Now we're going to flip over this card. We've got the nine. He's got the dragon spear, so he kills the dragon. 
Flip this over, we got a three. Luckily, we have the torch still. Flip this over, and we have the grail. Unfortunately, the grail is no longer in play, so he's going to do four points of damage. We have five, six, seven, eight hit points, so we just put this over here to remind us. So now we have um, half, half life left, so we have four hit points. Flip this over, and unfortunately, we take another four points of damage. As you see, there was a, this would have gotten killed by the torch. Very low amount of cards, but some players may have bluffed their way and put some cards in there, act like it's not a big deal, and then that player removes the uh, grail, and it's, uh, it's you know pretty bad for the person who ran the dungeon. So each player is going to start with one of these cards. It's a reference card, which has all the, the characters in the game, or the monsters in the deck, and how many copies of each there are. It also has the symbols with, uh, from the different car or a different av adventurer tiles on what kills them outright. But the reason you also have this is anytime you fail to go through the dungeon, you flip the card over. Now it turns red. If you ever take a second hit point, you're eliminated from the game. Luckily, it's not that long of a game, so it's not that big of a deal. However, if you do run the dungeon and you complete it, you get one of these success cards. Comes with five, and if you ever get two, you're the winner. So let me show you some of the other characters here. We've got the Barbarian, who has four hit points. He has a four hit point uh, chain mail, three hit point shield. He's also got the torch, so three or less guys. He has the, the hammer, which defeats both the, uh, the number fives, which are golems. He has this axe, defeat one monster after you draw it. So unlike the sword here, where you have to claim it beforehand, he actually can uh, kill whatever you draw. So if you draw that dragon, you can immediately discard that once per dungeon, though. And then he has the hip, uh, healing potion. After he dies, such in this case, if we die by those two fours, then you can come back with your adventurer's hit points, which would be the printed value, except for it would be on this character, which is four. Next we have the rogue. The rogue has a three hit point, a five hit point armor, three hit point shield. He has the ring, so it defeats monsters with strength two or less, which I think there's only four cards in the deck with that, uh, the two of the twos and two of the ones. And uh, after you do that, it adds the total of their strength to your HP. So if you kill a two, not only do you kill that two without taking damage, but you also gain two maximum hit points as well. He has a cloak of invisibility, which defeats monsters with strength six or more. The dagger, which is uh, just like the sword from the uh, warrior, which is defeat one monster that you choose before entering the dungeon. And then the healing potion, just like the barbarian. And finally, we have the mage, which is probably the most unique one. He has two hit points, a three hit point, and a six hit point item. Uh, I should note that you can't ever remove the adventurer's tile, the one that's up here like the warrior. You can only remove those six pieces. Uh, anyway, back to this. So, we have Polymorph. Polymorph allows you to defeat one monster you draw, and then you get to replace it with the next monster from the deck. Not the dungeon that you're building that you're running through, but the cards that weren't put into the dungeon. Obviously that's really cool if that's empty, but He's also got the Grail, which defeats even numbers. And the uh, Demonic Pack, it defeats the Demon, which is the number seven, and the next monster. So that can work out to your favor, especially if the dragon happens to be right after the demon. And then you got Omnipotence. Omnipotence. Ah, whatever. Anyway, so if all, even if you fail the dungeon, if you look at all the cards in the dungeon and they're all different numbers, there's no duplicates, you immediately win anyway. Now, be careful with this one. You can't just immediately flip out all the cards just to see if that happens because the order of the characters do matter sometimes based on uh, if you're going to polymorph and stuff like that. So anyway, that's pretty much the, uh, the characters. And um, like I said, once you get two success cards, you are the winner. This game is awesome. It's so small, so compact, and it packs a punch. I mean, I, I'm a big sucker for push-your-luck style games, and this takes it in a new direction. This is like... Like I said multiple times in this video, it's a game of chicken. You're trying to stay in longer, which is essentially pushing your luck, but you're trying to outlast the other people, or the other players. Really fun. I think it works best with three. Four players, there might be a little bit too many random things that go into the deck or get removed, and you can't, you're can't. you almost just guessing at that point. There's not really a calculation to it. And in two players, I think it becomes a little bit too calculated because you, only, you know half the cards in the deck, and once the the other player makes the, the wrong choice. Like for instance, we played a game where he took out the spear uh, for the warrior, and I was like, there's no, he probably took that out because he played the dragon in there, right? So obviously he could have bluffed that, but 
without playing it too many times, maybe that, that bluffing doesn't seem apparent at first. So three players works really well. Four players is still pretty good. Probably two players, I won't play it much anymore. I've only played it a few play times two players, and I was just kind of like, you know, I'd rather play it with more people or do something else. But game works really well. It, I can see this being expanded, including more adventurers, like some cooler stuff, maybe even other decks of monsters with different layouts. Uh, you know, right now it has like, you know, two of every guy, and then one of the last three, there's no not even an eight. Uh, so if they put in like new decks where it has like maybe four of one number, I mean, certain adventurers would do better or, or worse. So super, super fun, super highly recommended. It. It's awesome. It's, uh, it's extremely light. If you don't like push your luck style games, you probably won't enjoy this either. Uh, but other than that, I, I totally recommend you trying it out and I uh, really hope they expand on this and, and add some more to the game. So Anyway, feel free to email me. My email's below. It's timjanette at gmail.com, and you can follow me at Twitter at the, uh, at the thing down here. Uh, anyway, until next time, guys, keep on rocking, rolling dice. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.